Hey guys, tonight's little uh, tech tidbit is about uh, the different types of rear end housings and axle combinations that are available. And uh, I never really put a lot of thought in because we've been doing this so long, I just kind of get used to uh, the, the process. But I got asked recently what the difference was when I was talking about a floater housing and um, the person I was talking to didn't understand the difference between the two. So I thought, okay, well, that, there's probably other people that don't uh, get that either. So we'll touch on that a little bit, kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about. So this housing on, on the table here is, this is a full floater housing. So um, these are kind of uh, termed as a floater housing. They're just kind of abbreviated, but there's two different types of axle drive configurations. You have a flanged axle or a floater axle. And a floater axle is kind of a shortcut for a full floating rear differential, which means that the axle, which is right here, this is the drive axle for a floater, it, it floats in the two splines, okay? So you've got your spool spline on this end, and then out on the outer end, on the hub end, you've got a drive flange that is separate of the axle. So what this is designed for is to take a lot more um, severe duty load. So this particular axle here, this is a flanged axle, and um, basically it's pretty self-explanatory. The, the drive flange is made onto the axle shaft. So you've got your um, axle flange here with your studs in it, your bearing, which is gonna go in the housing end, and then your 40 spline that's gonna go into the spool. So again, this is a flanged axle, and you see there's a retainer ring on here that's, that locks the bearing on. So in this type of application, this axle is got the bearing supported in the housing end. So the full, everything is supported here. So the, the weight of the car, the tire shake, the drive torque, all that comes through here and is, is transferred out to the wheel. So this axle has to do everything in the back of the car from supporting it to, to any, anything that goes on from weight transfer, all that goes through this axle. Well, they're, they're great, but they do have limitations for horsepower. When you start getting into some real high horsepower stuff, you want to go to a floater housing, which is this type of housing here. And so instead of having a housing end on here that, that, the, that this bearing would slip into, this has a spindle. So, and the way we build these is a little different. We actually have spindles that are long, so they go all the way to the inside here. You can actually see that spindle goes all the way in and is double welded inside the axle tube. So you've got your outer axle tube here and this spindle is welded in on the inside and outside. So what happens is, is there's a, instead of having the, um, the, the wheel bolted to the axle flange that, that is made into the axle, it, it bolts onto the hub. And then there's two big bearings here that ride on this. You can see this is a used housing, but the bearings actually rode on this raised surface here and here that will take the load. So you, what in essence, you have the housing now supporting the load through the hub, which so you've got a big hub on here with the, and the rotor, the brake rotor is made onto the back of the hub. And so the weight of the car and a lot of the transfer of the push of the car forward, everything is handled here on this heavy spindle. And the axle then just, its sole job is just to drive the wheel forward. So now you've taken all that extra stress off of that axle and you've transferred it through these splines. And then so this drive flange will go out here on the end of this hub and it slips over the studs. And obviously when the, when the axle turns forward, it's gonna drive these splines and spin that hub, which is turning on these bearings. So for high horsepower applications, this is ideal. And it's actually mandatory in a lot of classes, like in Pro Mod, it's pretty much mandatory every sanctioning body because it's so much safer, um, you're, you're taking all of that stress and transferring it into the housing and the axle versus this flanged axle here, which takes everything out through this small neck down here on the end. So top sportsman car, some stuff like that. These are perfect. This is actually a, uh, this is a lightweight uh, axle combination. You can see it's, it's milled out here to lighten it up. It's also gun drilled. So that's another terminology. This is the, this is a 40 spline, uh, uh, for the spool in, and then this is gun drilled here. This is a 7 8 gun drill, and that's just to lighten it up. That, that helps to lighten the axle, but it also helps it torsionally because you're getting rid of that, that uh, extra mass in the center of the axle. 
So this is a lightweight axle package. Now, this particular floater axle here, this is um, this is a material called it's 300M is the material that it's made of, and this actually has a one inch bore all the way through the end. So this got a little plastic plug in here to keep any oil residue out of the inside of the axle. So this is the drive flange in, and but with that material being a lot uh, stronger, you can bore this out to one inch. So you can this thing is really light. So basically the way this is going to go together is um, this is going to slip on here. So this is your wheel side here, and this little retainer ring is going to keep it in place. So when we put this together, this will go in here, and then it'll engage in the spool splines, and then this will slide up on here, and you can see this little step is going to ride on this seal right here. So this ends up popping in right there just like that. And then this will then drive the studge, which turns that hub forward. So, quick little summary, this is when somebody talks about a floater housing or a full floater or do you have a floater housing in your car, this is what they're talking about, which is um, a, a heavy duty spindle welded in, a uh, full floating axle, which is this shaft here, and if they talk about a flanged axle housing, this is what this looks like. So, quick little rundown for you guys to ponder over tonight. So, thanks for watching.